Units are very important in physics and um, obviously calculus is also very important, is the language uh, of physics and especially of, of mechanics. So this problem is about making sure or at least uh, convincing yourself that the units and the calculus are consistent. So uh, part A says, express the chain rule in Leibniz D notation and show that it always results in an answer whose units make sense. So the chain rule is one of the most um, famous equations, I guess, uh, in mathematics. And it's that one. If you have taken uh, any calculus classes, you uh, almost certainly have seen it. So the derivative of a function of u with respect to x is equal to the derivative of that function with respect to u times the deriv derivative of u with respect to x. So, and actually, if you have more variables, you can continue expanding this and it looks like a chain, right? So it's kind of kind of cool. So it's called the, the chain rule. So uh, this uh, numerator you know, is going to have the same units as this one. And this du might have different units, but because you are multiplying it with a du over here, those units are going to cancel out. And so, the units of this derivative are going to be uh, these ones, which are the same. It's the same as over here, right? So that's it. That's part A. Um, for part B, uh, we're going to check this out with an example. So you have uh, an object, object And you're given a a position equation. So the position is a cosine of bt. So far in class, we have seen um, I guess situations in which the position uh, is just a straight line or a parabola in time. This one, you know, is only slightly more complicated. Uh, it is uh, repetitive, right? It's a cosine function. So it tells you the position in x. So it's if x is uh, horizontal, then uh, it's going to be oscillating like this. Right, and this red thing is the, the object that is oscillating. So cosine starts at one and it looks like that. Uh, the minimum over here is minus one. And uh, the cosine function has some interesting things that uh, which we'll remember. So this whole function we're multiplying at multiplying it to times a. So since the range of the cos of the cosine is from negative one to one, essentially we're just going to multiply it. You know, the maximum value is going to be a and the minimum value is going to be minus a. So if your uh, body starts here, you know, your particle, and it's going to be moving like this, then from here to here, if, uh, it's kind of like this. From here to here is the the amplitude of this of this oscillation. Okay, and so the argument of the cosine has to be unitless. You know, this is um, a function that does not take units. 
and it doesn't produce units either. So that means that if this is, is position, then the units of A uh, have to be meters, right? Or some unit of, of length. Um, and the cosine is going to be unitless. So you just have the meters. Um, that's easy. The amplitude, yes, you can measure it. It's a, it's a distance. Uh, the time here has units of seconds. And I mentioned that the argument has to be unitless. So that means that B ought to have units of one over second, right? So that it is unitless. So the um, I guess the angular distance that uh, it takes the cosine to go you know, back and forth, one oscillation, is uh, 2 pi in radians. So this is pi, this is pi over 2, and this is 3 pi over 2. And in degrees, well, this is 360. I can write it from here, I guess. This is 180. This is 90. And this is 270. Okay, so you have, you need a constant, that B, so that um, the whole uh, you know, time that it takes is going to be normalized by these 2 pi. Um, radians. Okay, so that's uh, a lot of information about the cosine, but that's also the answer to part B. Part B, an object has a position as a function of time given by x equals a cosine of bt where A and B are constants, infer the units of A. We said that A, the units have to be meters. Or some unit of length. And B has to be one over second or some inverse time. So this could be, can also say that it's S to the negative one. And Actually, one over second is also called a hertz. And you may have heard of that unit before. So B can be in hertz. Okay. And we also talked about their physical meanings. So for part C, it says find the velocity of this object and check that the chain rule has indeed given an answer with the right units. So we're given a hint here that we have to use the chain rule to get the velocity. So let's rewrite this one. So here F, instead of F of U is going to be a function of the time. So this is a f of t. Uh, sorry, no, no, it's a function of pt. OK, so this is going to be t. And this is going to be t. OK. So the derivative respect to time um, of x, right, which is this thing, is equal to the velocity, the xct, which is the derivative with respect to time of this whole thing, a cosine bt. 
right? And the way that we do this, you know, this, um, this is a multiplication. So you use the product rule over here. So it's gonna be the product rule is derivative uh, of u times v with respect to x is equal to u derivative of v with respect to x plus v derivative of u with respect to x. Okay, this is a multiplication, the derivative of a, of a, of a multiplication. So that means that this is going to be derivative. Uh, so this one is u and this one is v. So a derivative with respect to time of cosine of bt plus cosine of bt derivative of a with respect to time. But we are told in the problem and we know that a is a constant. So the derivative of a constant is zero and it's multiplying this times this cosine. So this whole thing is zero. Okay, so then this is equal to a derivative with respect to time of cosine bt. And now we're gonna use, I'm going to erase this one so that we don't get confused. Uh, we need this derivative. So uh, cosine bt is gonna be f of u. Okay, so So u is bt. So the derivative of u is b dt. Okay, so then this part over here is going to be b dt, and then we have a dt over here. So the dt's cancel out, and we end up with just a b. All right, so now we have a and b, and we just need the derivative of cosine of u with respect to u. So um, the derivative of cosine is negative sine of u, which is negative sine of bt. Okay, so putting everything together, Mm, this is a b uh, minus a b sine of b t. Okay, so this is the the um, the end result, and here the units of the argument are st still unitless second and one over second. But uh, over here we have uh, A has units of meters and B one over second. So that means that the units are meters per second, which is what you will expect for a velocity, right? And so we have shown that using the the chain rule, you get the right units.
And just one last thing. Uh, cosine looks like that. And sine looks like that. All right, so you can see that when the cosine uh, is maximum, well, the, the slope of the cosine is maximum, and remember that the slope is the derivative, then this is a maximum, um, although it has to be inverted because, because here the slope is negative, right? So if you plot negative sign, then it looks like this. Okay, so you have the maximum of the slope here, uh, also the maximum of the slope, you know, positive here. And over here, the slope is zero and the values are zero. And so that's why the derivative of the cosine is a negative sign. All right, so this is a good problem. I hope you enjoyed it.